data abstraction example. So, in any C++ program where you implement a class with public and private members is an example of data abstraction. So, we know that all those members it may be member variables, may be member functions which are defined under the public section can be accessible from the outside world. But those members which are defined under the private section is they are not accessible from the outside world, they are accessible from within the class itself. So, let us go for one sample example here. So, here we are having this class, the name of the class is adder. Under this adder, we are having one constructor. Constructor is nothing but a function whose name will be same as that of the class name. A constructor always must be declared under the public section. When an object will be instantiated under this class, then the constructor will be invoked by default automatically. Constructor can be of two types. One is parameterized constructor, another one is non-parameterized constructor. Non-parameterized constructor means it does not have any input argument. Parameterized constructor means it will have some input argument. Here this constructor is having some input argument. So, that is why this constructor is known as parameterized constructor. If this constructor the name of the function is same as, as that, the, that of the class name. So, that is why it is a constructor. If it does not have any input argument, it will be known as the non-parameterized constructor or default constructor. A constructor mainly will be used to initialize member variables. You see here we have passed one value for i and that is the default value. So, this i is getting assigned to total and total is nothing but one of the member variables of this class. A constructor cannot have any return type specification. Do not tell that constructor cannot return anything. You should mention that a constructor should not have any return type specification and a constructor cannot be inherited. In this way, you can have so many different properties of a constructor. So, this is a constructor function and now we are having another function that is a member function that is add num which is taking this number as input and which will add this number with the respective total and this add num this function does not have any output argument here. We are going to get another function that is the get total which returns the value of the total and total will be of integer type. So, that is why the value has been returned will be of type integer also. So, here under the private section we are writing this total. So, as this total has been written under the private section, so it is not accessible from the global world from the outside of this class. So, all the member functions which are defined in this respective class can access this total. So, there is no boundary uh, conditions are there, but as it is defined under the private section, so hidden data from the outside world. So, now let us go for object declaration of this class adder. We know that object is nothing but instance of a class. Whenever you are talking about some instantiation or instance, that means some memory spaces in the primary memory in the RAM of the system is getting allocated for that respective variable. So, adder is the name of the class, a is the respective object. So, a dot add name, a dot add num rather, a dot add num, a dot add num. In this way, I have called it for 3 times passing 10, 20 and 30 and then we are trying to get the value of total to get printed, but as total is a member variable under the private section. So, total cannot be accessed. To access total, I must be using the function get total which is under the section public and that get total can access total. So, that is not a problem for us. So, as a result of that, we will be calling this respective function that is a dot get total to print the value of the total accordingly. I think it will be better if you go for one practical demonstration where you will be demonstrating that how this concept has been implemented in this code. So, here is the demonstration for you. In this class adder, we are having one constructor adder, which is a parameter as constructor. We are having another member function, which is defined under the public section. So, it is accessible from the outside world and name of the function, member function is add num, which takes 
a number as the input argument and which adds this number with the total. And that is another function which is defined under the public scope. So it can be accessed from the outside world and the name of the function is getTotal which returns the value in total. So that's why this getTotal is having the output argument that is int. So here we are having this private section is there which is containing which is having only one member function which is int total and it is it will remain hidden from the outside world because this total is defined under the private scope now you see here this total can be accessed from any member function defined under the same class so a member function defined under a class can access any other member variables or member functions defined under the same class in any section private protected or public so now here we have defined one adder class object that is a from a i just go i'm just going on adding to a 10 20 and 30 with the variable total through the function add num because num is actually adding the value number the value in the number which is the input argument with the value in the total variable which is under the private section and at the end if i want to get the total then obviously i must be using a dot get total which will give me the respective total value and here you see the value is coming as 60 and that is quite obvious that the value will be 60 here because the value will be 60 here because you see here we have added this 10 20 and 30 so the value will be 60 in this case so if i execute the same code if i execute the same code using gnu c++ here the program name is proc 68.cpp so a.exe will be the output file and also it is giving the value as total 60. So in this way, we have shown you that how this program is getting executed in C++ ID and also using GNU C++ compiler for the compilation of the program for its execution. Thanks for watching this video.